Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Saturday, March 23rd, 2019, and I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you like the content of my videos, please do hit the like button if you kindly would. And uh, that would help support the channel a lot. Alright guys, well I got a fascinating video for you today um, that deals with the legend, the folk legend Paul Bunyan, believe it or not. And the real person that supposedly Paul Bunyan is, could be based on, um, according to researchers and historians, etc. So, um... I was very interested in that, and you know, upon, you know, doing some research on it, I came across a couple of articles, one from uh, How Stuff Works Here, Was There a Real Paul Bunyan, and you know, I read this article, and I also read one that was done by the History Channel, which I was like, uh-uh, even if they're telling everything the right way, I just, I don't trust them at all. But um, I came across, you know, what needed to really be said in an article from, I guess, the Portland Herald Tribune by this uh, lady, Juliana Lejero. Um, bad pronunciation, and she has a difficult French name, but she, she has, uh, you know, some background there from Maine, she's French, and uh, she knows something about it because they're, they're into it there, so I'll read you this article, but before I get to the article here, because there was something in this article that really struck me, okay, and the other one, you know, on uh, How Stuff Works and the History Channel one, they all have centered around this research done by these uh, historian researchers uh, from I forget what university but <clears throat> in any case um, what was said in there just caught my eye and it just made me think right away of Jim Vieira and um, his TEDx talk which was banned this was a banned TEDx talk and that really was the reason why I even got into it because I was looking at another band TEDx talk of Rupert Sheldrake who I'm also interested in his work despite how um, he's bad mouthed by you know Jan Irvin and all that kind of stuff but um, I'm still interested in his work especially with animals I'm in interested in anything like that but this was a band TEDx talk by Jim Vieira on the stone works in New England around where he lives and you know if you don't know anything about Jim Vieira you know that he's a stone mason who specializes in dry laid stone so you know he knows something about it but listen to a little bit what he has to say in this video before we go on to Paul Bunyan but this is the part with the giants some strange things history of diff this is eminent historian George Sheldon one of these skeletons this is on page 78 Monstrous size, head as big as a peck basket with double teeth all around. Examined by Stephen Williams, who said the owner must have been nearly eight feet high. Eight foot skeleton, double rows of teeth. Like, what the hell is that? And I just felt compelled to dive into the historical texts. So I spent countless hours, tens of thousands of pages, and I found similar things. Middleborough Mass, seven, eight, double rows of teeth. Uh, up in Rockingham, Vermont. The jawbone was of such size that a large man could easily slip it over his face, and the teeth, which were all double, were perfect. Double rows of teeth again. Here we go. Martha's Vineyard, seven foot, an unusual feature, a complete double row of teeth in both the upper and lower jaws. So I went to the Pocomtuck Museum. I said, yeah, here you go. Sheldon talks about an eight-foot skeleton with double rows of teeth. Do we know anything about this? He said, oh, here's his archaeological scrapbook my Da Vinci Code moment. I open it up and he has giant skeleton reports pasted in there with mound builder stuff and Sheldon was basically, you know, in... 
Okay, guys, so in any case, you get the picture here, and if you haven't seen this video, obviously, please do check it out. It's in my playlist, New England, America's Unknown Civilization, that deals with all these, you know, stone builders, as I'll call them anyway. Okay, so... You can check it out in my playlist there. So in any case, you know, Jim Vieira goes through all of these findings of skeletons in the colonial days. This is not during the Victorian period, the time of, uh, you know, all the, you know, sensationalism around all the different things that were found at that time. Okay, so this is far earlier than that, all right? So in any case, the article about Paul Bunyan and the real Paul Bunyan, the person who is based, you know, Paul Bunyan is based on, there was something about that that just struck me. So just remember double rows of teeth. Okay, so here's the article from the Portland Star-Herald or Ledger or whatever the heck it is. Okay, so Paul Bunyan is a popular American folk hero who visually portrays the lumberjack heritage and larger-than-life common working man. Indeed, the American giant Paul Bunyan could be our country's first official Franco-American born in Bangor, Maine with ancestry in French Canada. A colorful giant statue of Paul Bunyan is evident on Main Street out of the Bangor Region Chamber of Commerce. My lovely 15-year-old granddaughter, Amanda, was going back to school shopping with Mimi near Bangor, where she lives, when we decided to visit the Paul Bunyan statue. So, Mimi, do you know who the real Paul Bunyan was, asked Amanda? So I decided to find out more about the man behind the legend. Straight away, I called Maine folk songwriter Joseph Pickering, who also lives in Bangor. Pickering wrote the words to the Ballad of Paul Bunyan, which is actually the theme song for the Bangor Region Chamber of Commerce. Okay, so it's the theme song there of this uh, folk songwriter guy, Joseph Pickering. Okay, yes, Paul Bunyan has French-Canadian roots, admits Pickering. Some say the mythic figure, Paul Bunyan, came from a leader of a farmer's rebellion in Quebec against the British, known as the Papineau Rebellion of 1837. Others tell the story of another Quebec man who moved to the Northwest. The man was reportedly born with double row of teeth. Double row of teeth that he used to chew the ends off a wooden bar. The guy liked to drink and chew wood, I guess. Anyway, he actually came to no, to no good end. He was eventually murdered, says Pickering. My own research proves out much of Pickering's story. Legends claim that five overworked and exhausted storks delivered Bunyan to his parents in Bangor, Maine, sometime in the early years of the 19th century. As a child, Bunyan was given a pet blue ox named Babe who grew large enough to eat 30 bales of hay for a midday snack. Bunyan was a great lumberjack who according to his myth, could clear a forest with a single swing of his axe. But Bunyan's legend is based, at least in part, on some facts. Historians who researched Paul Bunyan's legend refer to a real French-Canadian timber man named Fabian Joe Fournier. It's actually Fournier who is most likely the real person behind the Paul Bunyan fable. Born in Quebec around 1845, Fournier went to Michigan after the Civil War because logging paid considerably more than similar work in Canada at the time. He was large and strong and could definitely handle a double-bit axe. Fournier stood, oops, Fournier stood six feet tall and had large, powerful hands. Okay. 
So he was a big dude. He had large, powerful hands and double rows of teeth. Okay, so, you know, people who were like, you know, that double row of teeth thing, oh, that's a crazy thing, and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Jim Vieira actually found people who are alive today who have double rows of teeth. Apparently, it's some, you know, they say it's some genetic defect or something, but... You know, this could be, you know, some sort of genetic carryover. You know, we don't know. Um, I forget what they call that exactly. This is a scientific term for it. But in any case, let's go on with this thing here. Okay. It's actually Fournier who is most likely the real person behind the Paul Bunyan fable. Born in Quebec around 1845, Fournier went to Michigan after the Civil War because logging pickets could leave. Okay, I read that already. Six feet tall, had large, powerful hands, okay, and then they mentioned the teeth again. Indeed, he may have well have had two sets of teeth, as Pickering suggests. Fournier brawled, drank heavily, and was murdered after one of his brawls. He was hit on the back of his head with a ship carpenter's mallet on the night November 7th, 1875, although his death record shows he died in October of that year. Hmm... Paul Bunyan's myth and legend can be historically traced chronologically through newspaper stories, poetry, and songs. So over time, these tall tales about a giant lumberjack also became connected to a French-Canadian hero of the Quebec Farmers Uprising of 1837, called the Papineau Rebellion. A man named jo Bon John was apparently a hero of this effort to throw out British rule over Quebec farmers. Eventually, the lumberjack created in Fournier's legend merged with Bon John's to create a folk hero named Paul Bunyan. Regardless of where the legend originated, my research suggests it's absolutely safe to call the giant mythical man named Paul Bunyan a larger-than-life Franco-American. Okay, so this lady's into the Franco-American thing, the French in America. Okay, so again, you know, this double row thing is mentioned in all these articles, this double row of teeth. As Jim Vieira mentions with all of these reports of the giants of that that were unearthed at the time of the actually colonial times, okay? And not at the time of um, all the uh, P.T. Barnum stuff and... Uh, the Cardiff Giant, which I go over in my videos because uh, Saram went over it in his book, The First American. He had to go over it, but, you know, he didn't, you know, he mentions the whole thing because it was a cockamamie story. And, again, what Saram was about was questioning, you know, the so-called certainty of... Uh, mainstream science and um, because of all of the accounts of these people who are either ignored and dismissed or whatever it is the one I did on the Cardiff Giant which took place during early you know Victorian times you know um, mid you know um, 19th century so you know, we're not talking about that. You know, Jim Vieira is not talking about it. He's talking about researching, you know, the histories of in colonial times. When I did my argument in my video, let's talk about giants, was that, you know, the people of this time were not as stupid. And, you know, look, this whole thing, while people were not able to identify Human bones is got to be the most ridiculous thing. You're talking about after millennia of people eating every kind of animal on earth and everything and knowing exactly what their 
physiology, their physiognomy, their skeletons and veins and muscles and joints and everything else like that and seeing all the the scores of dead people. I'm just reading in, you know, Charles C. Mann's book about the numbers, the numbers about how, you know, it's such a sin that, you know, just the, the native peoples were wiped out by diseases brought by the Europeans just in like the 95 percentile and it was just they all they noticed was these t empty settlements native settlements you know after the old disease swept through there and how all the the bones were you know bleached in the sun you know when you're telling me people witness all of this stuff and they seen you know human skeletons for thousands of years they couldn't identify human skeletal remains or anything remotely looking like it or whatever is just uh, so ridiculous. I, I, you know, this is one of the arguments they give about the large humanoids or whatever, and it's such a, it's such a crummy argument because it doesn't hold water for just the reasons I just said. People have been eating everything in this planet for so long. They know what all the bones look like. They know what the bones, battlefields filled with dead corpses everywhere, bones everywhere. You're telling me people didn't know anything about how to identify bones. You, you must be joking. It's just See, and man's book is a book dedicated to proving all the points of formerly held by mainstream academia and nothing but a bunch of hogwash okay so in any case guys just before this gets too lengthy i just wanted to go over this i told you and i showed you what jim Vieira did in his hardcore research you can't get any deeper than that they're going from town to town and looking through town records that stretch back to the you know 17th century and all this kind of stuff as you know Vieira did and all these unearthing of skeletons with double rows of teeth and then we find out Paul Bunyan our Paul Bunyan here here's the Disney cartoon for you okay you gotta give him his big bottle there he is one, two. Silly. Okay, so in any case, guys, I just wanted to, you know, point this out about who the Paul Bunyan is based on, this fellow, and he's got double rows of teeth, and he's big, okay? What can I tell you? You make of it what you want to make of it, and, uh, We'll call it a day. All right? All right, guys. Anyway, Bugcat7 signing out. Thanks a lot, guys. Hit the like button, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye now.